Coming up on today's Locked On Dodgers for the first time since 1977, the Dodgers swept a four-game series in San Francisco. It wasn't all fun and games, though, as Clayton Kershaw came out of the game early. We'll talk about that and the potential loss. We'll talk about Harlan Garcia uh, picking a weird time to taunt the Dodgers, and we'll get into the upcoming Padres series. That's what's on tap, so make sure to keep it Locked On Dodgers. You are Locked On Dodgers. Your daily Los Angeles Dodgers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yo, 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 Dodger fans, welcome to Locked On Dodgers. We are part of the Locked On Podcast Network, the number one local sports daily podcast network. Locked On, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. This is Locked On Dodgers, and you can find us wherever you find podcasts and on YouTube simply by searching for Locked On Dodgers. Make sure to subscribe in all those places, and you won't miss a day because you know we're not going to. Uh, just make it easy on yourself. If this is your first time listening or watching. I'm Vince Samperio. This is my co host, Jeff Snyder. We're both lifelong Dodger fans that have covered the Dodgers. A variety of ways over the years and continue to cover the Dodgers in a variety of ways. One of those ways being this here podcast, Locked on Dodgers, where we're with you every Monday through Friday for about 30 minutes a day. Uh, Jeff, we talk about the Dodgers and the Dodgers are on a roll right now. They just swept the Giants for the second time in a row. Two four game sweeps back to back. One in L.A., one in San Francisco. The one in L.A. was the first time since 90s. This one in San Francisco, the first time since 1977. And it feels good. Uh, it feels good to beat the Giants. When was the one in the 90s? I can't remember. What year was it? Uh, it's 92 or 97, I think. Oh. I don't remember. I was hoping it was 91, so it could have been the year you were born and the year I was born. But uh, oh, cool. e- either way, yeah, it's fun beating the Giants. I think that's been a theme that we've touched on several times this season. And uh, it, it's kind of funny that every I think every series against the Giants this year has been a sweep, right? Three sweeps right. for the Dodgers and one for the Giants. Yeah. And uh, so the Dodgers have won the season series now already. Uh, and yeah, the Giants are uh, 26 and a half back. Uh, no, 21 and a half back. Uh, that's right. 21 and a half back. The Rockies are 26 and a half back in last place. So the, the Giants are only five games out of last place. They are now four games under 500 because they were 500 coming into this series. And then they lost four straight games, as we may have mentioned. So uh yeah, that that's fun. Fun, uh, but unfortunately, we couldn't. You know, the, they didn't want us to have all the fun. Clayton Kershaw came out early, uh, went out for the fifth inning, and didn't make it through his warm up pitches uh, from the Giants broadcast. It looked like he said something about his back. Uh, when we got the info later in the game, it was low back pain. And then when they talked to Roberts and Kershaw after the game. Uh, they didn't know much. I mean, they just know it was his back. Kershaw was visibly frustrated in his interview. And I know it's the reporter's jobs, but clearly you can tell that Kershaw didn't know much other than his back hurt. And they kept asking similar uh, veins of the same question. And you can Kershaw was being very nice, uh, but answering in the only way he could is he doesn't know. And he'll find out more tomorrow. Depends how he wakes up. Everyone's already starting speculation of how long it could be and if it's as long as he missed last time and everything else. And, you know, it could be as something as simple as his back locked up or back. You know, I don't think it was back spasms because he would have said that. But just, you know, it might just be, oh, my back hurt today. Sometimes if you're somebody with back pain, that happens occasionally. And it's not necessarily like a longer term thing. Uh, but with him, the way he played, you know, the, he's pitching and everything else, the movement he has, uh, it might take a little bit longer. But what we don't know is what's wrong. What we will know tomorrow is a little bit more. And I would imagine it's going to be at least an IL stint, even if he is, even if he wakes up perfectly fine tomorrow, you kind of want to make sure it doesn't flare up again. I, yeah, I don't think there's any way he doesn't go on the IL. Uh, you know, the only reason they might hesitate is just because they went back to the 15 day IL this year for pitchers. Uh, and so he would miss three starts or so at a minimum, but uh, they've got Ryan Pepio. I actually, DM'd Ryan Pepio after Kershaw got hurt because he's in Salt Lake with the Oklahoma City Dodgers right now, and I'm driving down on Sunday, so I offered to drive him down with me. Uh, he said he's okay, though. He said the Dodgers would probably fly him if it comes <laughs> to that. But, uh, it, yeah, it, it it sucks. But hopefully the thing that gives me hope is he threw one more pitch just to make sure. 
Like he felt something. He's like, I'm going to throw another one. I feel like if it was super major, he wouldn't, it, it would have been obvious after the first one that, that hurt something, you know, uh, that that's what I'm telling myself anyway. And so he's going to go on the IL, but hopefully it's just for three or four weeks um, or, you know, two or three weeks, even really the three or four starts is, is what I meant to say. And uh, you know, and, and then, you know, you could put a silver lining on this that, Hey, that's a little bit fresher for October. And, you know, when people talk about 2020, and, you know, everybody, the the totally intellectually dishonest, disingenuous Mickey Mouse ring stuff about the Dodgers only won because of the shortened season. It's obviously stupid on its face. The only thing that I ever give even a little bit of credence to is Kirk Clayton Kershaw was still rested and healthy in October because he'd only had to throw two months in the regular season. Uh, that could have gone the other way. It doesn't diminish the 60 game world series at all because everybody played under the same schedule. Uh, but this could be a blessing in disguise. Uh, and you know, if he misses three or four weeks and then comes back and has a month to get ready for the postseason, and then he's fresh and rested and can dominate in the postseason, it would be great. And it would, uh, it's one of those things that makes it really nice that the Dodgers aren't in a, uh, pennant race right now yeah and i was gonna say we're gonna talk later about you know the updated numbers on the dodgers and how they can clinch the division you know how basically a, a epic collapse would would be the only way the dodgers don't win the division right now but yeah they do have that the ability to afford that because of the the way they built it out you know they have a little bit of a cushion for the number one seed in the national league they have a slight cushion for the number one overall seed but you know realistically They'd rather be healthy and head into October than worry about any of that stuff. And, you know, obviously people right away went to, man, I wish we didn't trade Mitch White. And, and yeah, realistically, maybe. But the Dodgers have Pepio. Pepio, I think they've kind of haven't really, you know, used him. I think realistically they hold Ryan Pepio in higher regard than Mitch White. But they don't didn't want to have him up in the majors the whole time. They kind of wanted to utilize him here for the second half. They can control the innings a little bit more in the minors where it doesn't really affect the bullpen for the major league team. So I think, you know, he's there. You got Michael Grove, who pitched earlier this year. You know, realistically, the Dodgers, they could throw me out there every fifth day and they're still going to win the division because it's just going to be, even if it is a loss every fifth day, that's one loss. Uh, and realistically, they're going to win three or four of the other five games. So they'll be in a good spot. So, yeah, it sucks. But like I said, it could be a small blessing in disguise. Uh, we did learn real quick that Dustin May is going to have two more rehab starts. Originally, we thought it was going to be one more after his last one. Uh, but two more rehab starts, so he's still got, you know, probably end of August. We he'll make his his time here with the Dodgers. He'll make a season debut. But all in all, as long as it's nothing too serious, you know, at the very least, exactly what happened last time, uh, Kershaw missed a month, and that's what we can ask for. But yeah, it just you know it put small damper on what was a very fun four days in San Francisco. Sorry, I talked on mute. Uh, but yeah, for sure. And one interesting thing to look at is before the game, Dave Roberts said that Dustin May was going to make at least two more rehab starts. And I guess it's possible that they could say, you know what, let's do that second rehab start as more of a piggyback start with the Dodgers instead of a minor league start, uh, just simply because, you know, if you get in a position, I haven't looked at the schedule, if they have you know, a situation where they have days off, so they might have a rested bullpen. So they could go with, you know, Dustin May for four innings or even five innings, so shooting for five. You want to get at least four and then go, you know, David Price and Yancy Almonte and some of the guys who are maybe more capable of going two innings uh, to try to get through a kind of a piggyback. Uh, it's a possibility. But again, the Dodgers aren't really in a desperate situation. So uh, part of me thinks it's unlikely that they'll change their Dustin May rehab plans just because of Clayton Kershaw. Yeah, they're off Monday, they're off Thursday of next week, and then they're not off again until the 25th. So hmm. uh, they they might be able to get away with some type of bullpen game in general just because they have those two days off in the next week and a half, but we'll see what happens. Uh, but yeah, we're going to talk next about Harlan Garcia and an interesting decision he made uh in in later in the game as the Dodgers were on the verge of sweeping the Giants before we get into that let's talk about Blue Nile because 
Whether you're ready to pop the question or you're celebrating a milestone moment, find jewelry as unique as her with the modern convenience of online shopping at BlueNow.com. If you're looking for fine jewelry but having trouble choosing, Blue Nile has jewelry experts on hand 24-7, available via phone or chat to help you find a memorable gift at every budget. If you're looking for that engagement ring of your dreams, they have simple online tools that let you choose diamond shape, size, clarity, as well as setting style, and each ring will be one of a kind. So make your moment sparkle with jewelry from BlueNile.com, and going on right now is the Blue Nile anniversary sale. Save up to 40% on classic fine jewelry pieces and 25% on engagement ring settings. Remember, every order is insured, ships free, and arrives in discreet packaging that won't give away what's inside. Shop stress-free and find your forever peace. Go to BlueNile.com today. All right, Jeff, let's get into uh, – so Harlan Garcia was pitching in the game, and he struck out James Outman and didn't really see it after the Outman strikeout in, in real time. I don't even know if they showed it on the broadcast, but – he did the Dodgers uh, pound to the head celebration after he struck out James Outman. And then he struck out, or was that Outman? He struck out Outman somebody was else. to end the inning. Yeah, so he struck out someone he, before it that. It was inning. Bellinger before that, yeah. Yeah, so struck out Bellinger, did it. Didn't really notice it. Did it after Outman. I noticed it. It seemed like a lot of people didn't notice it. And then the sports in LA cut out right as Gabe Kapler is arguing with the umpires. And then we come back, find the end. Right, basically, as soon as, Kapler was getting ejected. The umpire's hand was going up, and then Sports MLA had cut. Uh, but, yeah, it was interesting. He seemed to point at Mookie because Mookie was in the on-deck circle. I don't know if it was just a general gesture towards the Dodgers' dugout, uh, but Mookie was in the direct uh, vicinity of where he was looking and kind of doing it. Mookie basically told him, step up over here if you want to talk, and he didn't. And then uh, they warned both sides. Gabe Kapler got mad. I think Gabe Kapler was just trying to fire up his team, you know, one of those – we talked about it before where, you know, manager gets mad in order to inspire his team, or maybe he just wanted to go chill in the clubhouse because he was about to get swept. Uh, either way, it was a weird situation. After the game, they, uh, uh, Kirsten asked Mookie what that was about. He said, I don't know. You got to ask him. You know, Trey Turner made an interesting comment. He's uh, basically saying, you know, I don't know what blah, 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 all this other stuff, and then ended it with, I guess that's where they're at, which is a very nice, subtle dig of, yeah, they're down bad right now, and uh, that's I guess that's where they're at, which is a perfect answer to to that question. So, yeah, Jeff, I don't I don't even know where to get into this, but uh, Harlan Garcia, interesting decision that he made. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, just to it, it was definitely directed at Mookie. Uh, Mookie was the one who hit the home run earlier in the game to put them ahead, uh, a three run homer, and not coincidentally, Mookie also did a three run homer. Uh, when was that a couple week, a week and a half ago against the giants against Harlan Garcia, July 21st, whenever that, yeah. So almost two weeks ago against Harlan Garcia, Mookie hit a three run homer to break a six to six tie late in the game. And uh, so obviously I think Harlan was carrying a grudge from a couple weeks ago, which on the scale of carrying grudges, uh, it's not the worst we've seen a Giants pitcher do. Uh, that award still goes to Hunter Strickland, who threw at uh, Bryce Harper three years after Harper hit a couple home runs off him in the postseason. So, uh, Hunter Strickland, congratulations. You are still in first place. Harlan Garcia, he said after the game, he just let his emotions get the mo- best of him or whatever. Uh, I my, Here's my personal opinion on celebrations. Anything you want to do that celebrates your accomplishment, I am totally fine with. You can do cartwheels around the bases as long as you are celebrating what you did. Great. As soon as you start celebrating the failure of your opponent, I don't like it. I think it's it's Bush League. I I don't think you should be thrown out for it or whatever, but I I think there's no place for it. And what Harlan Garcia did was very much, I am celebrating your failure right now. And like you said, it's a weird time to do it when you're down four to two and about to get swept and about to go down by 21 and a half games in the in the division. You know, maybe we need a little refresher on what constitutes failure, Harlan. Um, but uh, you know, on the on the what's in the manager's name? The Giants manager, Gabe Kapler. On on that front, uh, I actually think Kapler was probably right to to get mad. Uh, umpire Phil Cuzzy, he's I assume he's the crew chief. Uh, he's the one who's I've definitely seen the most. Uh, and he kind of followed Harlan Garcia to the dugout and pointed at him and was yelling something at him. And I think that's what made Kapler mad. Yeah, I think he was basically saying, hey, it's not your job 
to coach my players and not your job to discipline my players, eject them or don't, but you're not allowed to yell at them. And, uh, and I agree with Kapler 100% on that. Uh, I've said the same thing to umpires, you know, uh, throughout the years at different levels of baseball. Yeah. You're, you're not a coach. You enforce the rules. And if he did something ejection worthy, eject him, but he doesn't need a lecture from you. He's a grown man. And, uh, so yeah, Kapler, I think that's why he was so upset. And, uh, maybe it was some of the frustration of about to get, lose their eighth straight game to the Dodgers, whatever it was, it was fun, made for good TV. And, uh, the best part was the next inning when Trey Turner hit a home run and everybody in the dugout except Cody Bellinger basically is doing the, the celebration. And, uh, and Joe Davis is like, was so deadpan. He's like, well, I mean, they're not going to do it less. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, I mean, it, it's a perfectly innocent fun. It's the Dodgers always have these dumb Every things. Team that, has it. Yeah. And, has and you never thing. know what it means. This one, we actually know what it came from, you know, and, uh, so in some ways it's better than whatever they were doing. I forget what it was last year that, Oh, dunking on them, you yeah. know, hitting the top of your head or whatever. It's like, yeah, you celebrate a home run. You know, that's what you do when you hit a home run. That's one of the benefits of hitting home run is your buddies get to cheer and, and do funny gestures at you. You know, it's, it's one of the great things about playing baseball for a living. So I assume Harlan Garcia gets that. Uh, if not, you know, thoughts and prayers to him in this hard time. Uh, but yeah, it was, uh, it was pretty darn silly. Yeah, I mean, in baseball and specifically, you know, more of a rivalry game, if the Dodgers had done like created a special celebration to do just against the Giants or Mookie had gone off script and done something out of character when he hit a home run or whatever the case was. And then later on, I mean, he didn't strike out Mookie, which is also the weird part to go after Mookie when you didn't even face him. Uh, But let's just say he had faced Mookie and then struck out Mookie and then he did it back similar to when Bellinger you know, did the chest thing against uh, Yohan Lopez or, yeah, Yohan Lopez of the D-backs. Or when Tatis did the sword to Bauer. Yeah, like that's, you know, that's that's the way I, you know, that's a little bit of just friendly rivalry competition uh, because that's a specific thing. But when it's something the Dodgers do for even a single, they do it. They've done, been doing it for a while now. You know, it's not directly directed at you. It's just them. You know, every team has a little thing. Whether it's, you know, there's a lot of different stuff. Even all the way down to high school, they all have that kind of thing when they get a base hit or a double or whatever the case is. So, yeah, it was just uh, interesting. It, it, it's, I guess, maybe they're trying to spark the rivalry since they can't do it uh, in the in the win column. They can kind of do it on the field a little bit. In the end, it didn't really matter. And then <laughs> when they asked Trey Turner, like, did you have any concern about doing it after you hit the home run in the inning after? And he said, no, I mean, we're celebrating. That's something that our team's done. We've been doing, uh, you know, I don't really care about anyone else or anything else. That's kind of what we did. And, you know, a lot of people were saying, oh, you know, Dodgers or Petty or whatever. The Dodgers already do that. Maybe not the whole team the way they did it. You know, maybe it was a little more expressive after the Turner home run. You know, hands Alberto standing on the top step and, you know, everything else. But the Dodgers already do that when the guy hits a home run anyway. So it's just like. The Dodgers aren't aren't going to get – we've seen them for a while now. They've been baited a little bit or, you know, at least teams have tried to bait them. Hasn't really worked out. The Dodgers don't play that way. The Dodgers, you know, they say they don't care. The one time, I, you know, when Grisham did the little spin against Kershaw, that was maybe the one time. I think it was Bob Guerin or whoever. They said something, and we were – even we were like, no, nah, you know what? That's just the name of the game. Uh, you know, I, I would prefer the Dodgers not to do that. The Dodgers don't really get on it if somebody celebrates – uh, but if they do, they do it in subtle ways, like, you know, Bellinger giving it back to Yohan Lopez or little things like that. So, yeah, yeah, uh, I was actually, Harlan tried, but it didn't work. I was actually going to bring up the Grisham thing, too, simply because I don't know if you remember, but uh, that, that was 2020. And it seemed like that fired the Dodgers up for the rest of the season. The Dodgers kind of realized we, we could use some of that emotion in our dugout, too, you know, and I could totally see that this being a thing where everybody gets on on every home, home run celebration now regardless of who it's against and actually maybe helps them, you know, get more excited. And obviously nobody's going to go hit a home run when they would have just hit a single, just because they want the celebration. You all, you, you always try to do your best anyway, but uh, I, I think there's something to be said for the camaraderie. I did think it was kind of funny that uh, very few of, of Harlan's teammates seemed super, super eager to do anything about it. <laughs> it was just kind of, you know, it, the Dodgers kind of left the dugout a little bit just to make sure there wasn't anything going on. And, and the Giants are like, okay, yeah, let's, okay, let's move let's on. We're about to get swept. Wrap this up. Let's wrap this yeah. up. Harlan, what are you doing? 
<laughs> yeah. Uh, next, uh, not as big a rivalry, but a rivalry, at least uh, in the sense of the definition of the word division rivalry. Padres are coming into town. The Dodgers play the Padres 12 times uh, between now and the end of the season. So we're going to get into kind of what we're looking for the rest of this way, kind of what the numbers are if the Dodgers do end up losing more games than they win against the Padres and just kind of how it doesn't necessarily matter for the division. Uh, but first, let's talk about Bet Online because it's the fastest and easiest way to check on in on all your betting needs. Find all your favorite sports and events at the number one online source for odds, lines, and games. Bet Online is the top online resource for all your sports wagering information from live in game betting, scores, podcasts. They've got you covered. Find reviews and news of every league, including MLB, NFL, NBA, NHL, combat sports, esports, and even golf. Head to Bet Online today or use your laptop on your laptop or mobile device to learn more about the action that's going on. Bet online where the game starts. Uh, all right, real quick. Before we dive into the Padres, Joey Gallo made his Dodger debut. He played left field. Uh, fine, fine in the left field. He beat the shift with the single. I don't think he was trying to do that. I think he swung too early and it went off the end of the bat. But either way, it worked out. He did strike out. Um yeah, I mean, obviously, I don't think the Dodgers have really had time to work with him. I'm sure they gave him a couple little things that they saw, but uh, work in progress, no real thing there. But I don't know if you had any observations. Uh, no, it was, yeah, I mean, he he got on base with that single, uh, could have scored a run. You know, it was a questionable send by Dino Abel, which, you know, questionable it doesn't necessarily mean bad. Uh they say if you never get anybody thrown out of home, you're probably not aggressive enough. And it did take kind of a perfect throw from Wilmer Flores on that relay to get him. So, I, you know, with nobody out, you and I both said on Twitter we didn't love it. But I understand it. And all it does – all it did Especially with make, the Giants' defense the way it's been. Yeah. All it did was make Mookie's home run a three-run homer instead of a grand slam. But, uh, yeah, you know, I like Gallo, and I'm excited he's here, and he seems happy to be here. And I think just that mindset might help some because – uh we we tend to think of baseball players, professional baseball players as being robots and not human beings, but they're human beings with emotions. And I think uh, playing in New York where, you know, people hate you. Uh, and I know the Yankee fans and broadcasters don't like to hear this, but uh, not everybody is, is cut out to play for the Yankees and that's okay. And that doesn't make them worse people or weaker people. It's just different personalities handle things differently. And uh, hopefully Dodger fans will continue to show Gallo some love and may maybe he can have some big moments for the Dodgers. He did say I, I did think, he did a little bit on the beard thing. <laughs> yeah, he knew he was gone, so he started growing the beard. Wouldn't yeah. it be awesome, though, if the Dodgers close out a World Series win over the Yankees with Andrew Heaney on the mound and a big home run from, <laughs> from Joey Gallo? Man, for, Yankee from your fans lips to the so baseball sad. guys. From your yeah. lips to the baseball guys. Let that happen. Uh, but, yeah, so let's talk about the Padres. Three games coming up at Dodger Stadium. This weekend, 12 games coming up between now and the, re and the end of the season. As of now, the Padres sit 12 and a half games back behind the Dodgers. So even if they beat the Dodgers all 12 times they play on the rest of the year, they would still need to outplay the Dodgers by a game uh, in order to take the division. So with that being said, obviously we know that. Uh, Jeff, I think you have some numbers real quick before we kind of talk about what we're going to look for the rest of these games against the Padres of just, you know, how in control the Dodgers are for the division. Yeah, I've shared some of these numbers before, so I'm just giving an update on what would have to happen. As of right now, the Dodgers are on pace for 111 wins, legitimately, actually 111.09 wins, uh, which is which is awesome. So if the Dodgers win 111, the Padres would have to go 50 and four the rest of the way to tie the Dodgers. If the Padres went 50 and four, I assume they would have won enough games to have won the series, the season series with the Dodgers, which would give them first place. So we'll just go with the tie there. So the Padres have to go 50 and four to tie the Dodgers. If the Dodgers just stay on pace to what they do, if the Dodgers were to go, uh, they have, they have 57 games left. If they were to go 28 and 29, uh, for, you know, just one game under 500, that would put the Dodgers at a hundred wins. The Padres right now are on pace for 91 and a half wins. The Padres would have to go, uh, yeah, if the Dodgers went finished with a hundred wins. So going just under 500 Padres would have to go 39 and 15 the rest of the way just to get to a hundred wins. 
uh, 39 and 15 is a lot better than the Padres have played. 39 and 15 is probably pretty close to, let's see, 39 divided by 54 is a 722 winning percent. So they'd have to be, they'd have to be better than the Dodgers have been so far this year just to tie the Dodgers if the Dodgers go about 500 the rest of the way. Uh, it's almost meaningless this regular season, you know, and, and we, we've we talked about that before, that the Padres getting Juan Soto doesn't scare us for the division. It makes the Padres a scarier team in a postseason series. But as we saw on Thursday, uh, even with Juan Soto, the Padres sometimes lose to a team like the Rockies. And uh, definitely won't be playing a team like the Rockies in the postseason. They'll be playing a good team and a team that won their division. And, and so it's, uh, oh, yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. But uh, the Dodgers basically have this division locked up. Yeah. And I think, you know, these games are going to, like, they're going to be fun. The 12 games I have left are going to be fun, regardless of, you know, what, if they're fighting for the division or not. You know, the Padres kind of want to show that they're, you know, the Dodgers is, had beat them almost 14 times in a row between last year and this year. They're five and two against them so far this year. You know, they kind of want to show their strength, their prowess that they you know with all the additions they made and, and you know, not, not be bullied, I guess, by the Dodgers realistically, but for the Dodgers, it's more just, you know, I think it's for the Dodgers, it's more about, you know, preparing for a potential October series, which is mostly figuring out the pitchers and figuring out the hitters, you know, where can we get these guys out? Where can we hit these guys? They obviously they face Darvish, they face Musgrove, they face Snell a lot. They still haven't figured out Snell. They figured out Darvish last time, but they hadn't really figured him out before that. Musgrove, they do enough every time they face Musgrove. They've gotten to him before, and then if you get into you know anybody else, Manea or or somebody, I don't even know who their fifth starter is with McKenzie out now. Oh, Clevenger, uh, they'll face Clevenger this week as well. So. The games are going to be fun, but I wouldn't put too much stock into them. If the Dodgers went four and eight, I wouldn't really, it wouldn't, you know, affect my thoughts he heading into the postseason. If the Dodgers went 0 and 12, maybe it might affect my thought like one, one percent. Like, oh man, I wish they would have won at least one. Uh, if they go 12 and 0, I'm not going to be any more confident against the Padres in October if they face them. So, like, it really doesn't matter. It's just going to be fun baseball between two teams that are really good, two lineups that are very deep. Two rotations that are pretty good. I think the Dodgers might have a slight advantage in the bullpen, even with the Padres getting hater. Um, but yeah, it's just going to be fun baseball. And uh, I mean, Dodgers the Friday, well Friday night now at Dodger Stadium, the tickets are expensive. They're going to do the the Vin Scully thing, so it's already because of that. But uh, yeah, it's going to be a pretty electric atmosphere this weekend at Imagine Dodger Stadium. Yeah, for sure. I've been keeping an eye on prices because I still have two tickets left to sell. Uh, and yeah, prices skyrocketed when the Padres got Soto and then they re skyrocketed after it was announced that the Vince Cully tribute was happening. Uh, the one thing I'll quibble, quibble with about what you said, Vince, is if the Dodgers did go 12 and 0 in these 12 games against the Padres, there's a pretty good chance the Padres don't even make the playoffs because right now you've got whoever loses the central and you've got the Braves, but the Padres are only currently f four. Let's see. No, not even four, four, four more wins and one less loss. That's two. So the Padres are only two and a half games ahead of the Phillies for that last wild card spot right now. The Dodgers could put a dagger in the Padres. You know, I would love, obviously, I'd love to see the the Dodgers sweep this series this weekend as kind of a statement to say, look, you went out and got the best player in baseball, the best player available, and then we swept you. So. Keep on trying, boys, but uh, but this is this is where it's at right now. I'd love to see that. I'd be perfectly happy with a two games to one series win. I, I'd be okay with the <laughs> losing the series. Obviously, not nearly as okay. Uh, but like you said, it doesn't really affect much overall. But just for for statement wise, I would love to see the Dodgers come out and just say, "Sorry, guys, nice try. Glad you blew up your farm. Uh, better not, better luck next year." Yeah, Dodgers won't be facing Musgrove. Uh, Padres won't be facing Julio, but the Dodgers will be facing Manaya and Clevenger and Darvish. So they're missing Snell as well. So uh, it was probably better. Snell has done pretty well against Dodgers, other than the last time they got to him. So, uh, but yeah, Jeff, I don't know if there's anything else uh, we have. 
Um, I don't think there's any other injury updates that we got. So just kind of waiting on Kershaw tomorrow. We'll see if they call up an arm right away or if they're going to kind of wait it out till the weekend. Kershaw wouldn't have been, ex obviously wouldn't be expected to start in this series anyways. So they might be able to write it out the weekend unless they know he's for sure going to be out. Then they'll bring up maybe a bullpen arm and then bring up whoever's going to start next week. So we'll see what happens. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to end with since June 28th on June 28th, after June 28th, the Dodgers were 45 and 28, which is pretty darn good. They were up by a game and a half in the division. Since then, the Dodgers won four, lost one, one seven, lost one, one eight, lost two, one three, lost one, and now one five. They've lost five games since June 28th. Just the Padres have played pretty good baseball and they're just losing ground. And I love it. And this is a very good baseball team. And I hope that all of us Dodger fans are enjoying the really good baseball team and not stressing too much about October until October actually gets here. Because one of the great things about being a baseball fan and specifically a Dodger fan these days is we get six and seven wonderful months of baseball enjoyment. And even though most years we end up sad the last game, uh, it doesn't negate the six or seven months of enjoyment we got. And this is a fun, fun team. Yeah. All right, that's going to do it for today's episode. That's going to do it for this week. We'll be back on Monday to go over the Padres series. Hopefully a, Pod a Dodgers sweep uh, over the Padres. That'd be fun. Thank you for making Lockdown Dodgers your first listen of the day. If you want another listen, check out Lockdown MLB with Paul Francis Sullivan, a.k.a. Sully. He brings humor, passion, and unique perspective on every team and the biggest stories around the league. Follow the number one daily league-wide podcast, Lockdown MLB, on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get podcasts. For us, you can find us locked on Dodgers Twitter. I mean, you can find us locked on Dodgers wherever you find podcasts and on YouTube. You can also find us locked on Dodgers on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, DMs are open on both of those accounts. DMs are also open on Jeff's personal at Snydog and my personal at Vince Amperio. If you ever have a question, comment, or concern, we'd love to hear from you guys. We got some nice feedback from some listeners about our Vince Scully episode. We, you know, we try to do our best and we tried our best not to choke up too much. And, uh, you know, we got some good responses. So I like that. And, yeah, that's what we got there. You can also get a hold of us via email, lockdowndodgers at gmail.com or via voicemail text at 323-863-5625. We're here every weekday morning, and we hope you'll be with us. When you get in your car, if you're at home, take your smart device play podcast, Locked On Dodgers. And remember, you don't have to agree. You just have to listen. Have a good one. We'll talk to you on Monday.